All right. So good evening, guys. Welcome back to the Malaysia Architecture Education Online Series. Proudly presented by Masa. Hope you guys are doing well and thank you for joining us tonight. So for those who are new, Masa is Malaysia Architecture Student Alliance and is a non-profit student community acting directly under PEM, which is the Pertubuhan Architect Malaysia, consisting of students representative from all architecture institute in Malaysia. During this time, Masa and Pam have decided to launch this online lecture series for students to be more productive and gain more insight. Architect Adrenta is the head of Pam Education and Dr. Zach Zairul is the converter. My name is Iris, a Masa representative from UCSI University and I'll be your MC for today. So tonight's topic will be delivering government policies through master plan. It is such an honor for us to get to invite uh, Dati Marziona as our guest speaker for this session. So let me introduce her to you all. Dati Marziona is a registered town planner. She's a managing partner of Urban Scale Studio, which is a town planning consultancy company registered with the Board of Town Planners Malaysia. She also holds many important positions, such as corporate member of Malaysian Institute of Planner and vice president of MIP. She's also the co-founder of Low Carbon City and Sustainability Center of MIP and co-writer of the Low Carbon City Framework. She's the director of the subsidiary companies of MIP, which are MIP Training Center, Sandra Bahat, and LCCSC, Sandra Bahat. Her experience as a town planner started with the Melbourne City Council. Her professional experiences enabled her to work closely with esteemed clients such as Time Derby, Petronas Group of Companies, and many more. So everyone, you can sit back and relax. We'll have a Q&A session at the end of the talk. But if you have any questions during the sharing, feel free to type them down in the chat box so we can attend to them at the end of the sharing. All right, without further ado, I would like to invite Datin Mazirana. Hi, Datin. Hi, hi, everyone. Okay, I will pass the ground to you. Okay. Hi, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam sejahtera and good evening to all. Um, I would like this evening sharing session to be as relaxed as possible. Eh? Though the topic is a bit heavy, uh, delivering government policies through master planning, uh, but I do not want it to be so dry and stressful uh, for all of you. Um, so anyway, um, delivering government policies through master planning. Eh? Um, first of all, um, I would like to also introduce Malaysian Institute of Planners. I hope all of you knows the existence of this institution. This is equivalent to Pertubuhan Architect Malaysia, but we are the um, Town Planners uh, Association. Lah. And uh, our functions of the institute as such, we have nine main functions, establish, maintain, register of members, undertake research, devise and impose standards, um, guidelines for the members, so on and so forth. Huh? And uh, tonight, I would like to go through or give a little bit of um, an overview um, of um, the need for planning, um, the law related to uh, planning, um, rancangan pemajuan, um, as you need to know under the provision of law, and the involvement of the community and how some of the policy um, can be applied to the master plan. Because sometimes we know that, you know, um, the policies and DASA and government regulations are there, but sometimes we do not know how to apply, it, especially the policies at the national level or even state level, because the policy seems to be a bit huge huh? um, for, uh, for everyone to understand. Okay, um, what, town planning in Malaysia. Um, town planning 
was introduced in Malaysia early 1920s eh, when it's still called Malaya. So at that moment of time, there's no uh, Town and Country Planning Act. There's no Akta Perancang Bandar. Town and Country Planning Act only exists in 1976. Yeah? Uh, that's where when Akta Perancang Bandar dan Desa comes in 1976, which is called Akta uh, 172. Um, Akta 172 looks at um, all these practices, yeah? practices of planning. Um, as you can see on the slide here, um, the town planning in Malaysia look at land use planning and also look at physical planning. But now planning has evolved to many aspects of planning. It's involved to um, transport planning, social planning, uh, environmental planning, heritage planning. Um, there's a lot of other angles of planning that um, we town planners look at. But the main crux of planning would look at uh, land use and physical planning. Yeah? And when we look at planning, um, many other, um, the most important uh, things that we need to look at the basic are the three P's, lah, people, profit, and um, uh, people, profit, what's the other one? Um, uh, the environment, eh? three P's. P for the environment is what I can't remember now suddenly. Um, planet, yeah, planet. So people, profit, planet. That's the other three P's. So in other words, environment, economy, and community. So those are actually equivalent to three P's also. So whenever we do planning, these three things are the crux of sustainable development. So these... these these are the things that we need to also uh, align uh, the, the design to. So, four main um, laws, huh? uh, planning laws that planners looked at or planning need to refer to. There are many other laws that we looked at, but these are the main four that we refer to in a basic uh, master planning. So, we look at Akta Perancangan Bandar dan Desa, 1976. This is uh, Town Planning Act. Uh, Act 172. We look at, um, if it's in Kuala Lumpur, we will look at Act 267, uh, Akta Perancangan Wilayah Persekutuan. And um, we look at Kanun Tanah Negara, National Land Code. This is also important uh, to look at. And we also look at uh, Akta Kerajaan Tempatan, 1976, Act 171. This is why... Um, Act 171, 172, but to root, it's 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 follow after each other because it's been um it's been gazetted together. Uh, 171, 172. So these are two four means um act that we actually refer to. So this the need to plan comes under the town planners uh town planning act, town and country planning act, act 172, section 19, bracket one. Tiada seorang pun selain pihak berkuasa tempatan boleh memulakan usaha atau jalankan apa-apa pemajuan melainkan jika kebenaran merancang berkenaan dengan pemajuan itu diberi kepadanya di bawah Seksyen 22 ataupun dilanjutkan di bawah Seksyen 243. 22 is is actually um, treatment of uh, application. Yeah? Uh, then only it will be treated. So bahasa law ni dia memang macam itulah. Yeah? So if it's in English, um, 19. Um, is actually prohibition of development without planning permission. No other person, no person other than a local authority shall commence, undertake or carry out any development unless planning permission in respect of the development has been granted to him under section 22 or extended under section 24.3. So us as a town planner, we carry this book everywhere. At least me lah. I don't know other planners lah. At least me. In my my working bag, I carry everywhere. Uh, town planner, um, town and country planning act, and also town planners act. Huh? So town planners act act five thirty eight. It governs all the town planners in terms of uh, our practice. Huh? So um, uh, being the being the board member of the town planners board, uh, I also need to also check on the practices also lah. Huh? So, um, I don't know whether you understand what it means by Section 19. Maknanya, tidak ada orang. This is the um, the punca kuasa, the the um, uh, the power given 
to um, the um, uh, local authority to actually request for all works that needs to be carried out require a planning permission. Uh, this is the punca kuasa. This is the law. So Akta uh, Perancangan, eh? uh, to the left is Akta Perancang Badan dan Desa. To the right is actually Akta um, uh, Kuala Lumpur, Wilayah Persekutuan. So those are the main uh, parts of the Act. Kalau you tengok uh, bahagian, uh, Akta Perancang Badan dan Desa ada 9 parts. Akta Perancangan Wilayah ada 10 parts. Kalau uh, uh, to the left, the Act 172, there has actually the beginning, dasar pentadbiran, rancangan pemajuan, kawalan perancangan, charge pemajuan dan perintah pemulihan pokok, lembaga rayuan notis pembelian kawasan pemajuan peruntukan pelbagai. So meaning to say anything you want to plan, the rules are in Town and Country Planning Act. So it's it's quite, if you if you refer to, this is quite easy. Then comes in guidelines because you have to remember this act is at fed, um, uh, federal uh, federal level. Then comes in all those um, regulation under uh, the state uh, where state also have the right to form their own kaeda rules and whatever, not on perancangan. Eh? So um, on the right side is the KL's law. Okay, hierarchy system perancangan di Malaysia. Kita di Malaysia ada hierarchy. Eh? So we have um, at national level, seluruh Malaysia. We have uh, state level, covers the whole of state. We have the district level, which cover the whole of district. Um, and we have a specific area, yeah? uh, site specific. So this is a planning system in Malaysia, hierarchy of planning system in Malaysia. So um, the first la layer of spatial is actually rancangan physical negara. I, I hope everyone knows there is a rancangan physical negara. Um, ataupun dia panggil national physical plan. At the moment, we have, we have actually gazetted rancangan physical negara ketiga. And now it is under revision to go for rancangan physical negara keempat. So, um, and this is actually uh, under the Atta Perancang Bandar dan Desa, it covers um, um, uh, under the law also. Eh? So what I mentioned here are all, are all under the law. Why I'm putting rancangan wilayah? You may have heard that there is perancangan wilayah, which is uh, Iskandar, um, Eastern Corridor, Northern Corridor and uh, wilayah uh, uh, and Southern Corridor. It's kind of a Southern Corridor. Rancangan uh, wilayah, though it is uh, spatial planning, um, it is not under the Act. The Act only uh, mentioned about the council, not the um, uh, not the plan itself. So what I mentioned, number one, two, three, and four are all mentioned in the uh, Act 172. So, um, rancangan struktur covers the whole of state. Um, uh, rancangan tempatan covers the whole of daerah which we call, so um, uh, rancangan struktur setiap negeri, every state would have its own rancangan struktur. So, from Perlis to, um, to Johor would have its own rancangan struktur. So, why I said only peninsula because Sabah Sarawak do not apply Act 172. They apply their own um, uh, uh, land ordinance, they call it. I can't remember the exact name. Eh? They don't apply 172. Same as Wilayah Persekutuan, they don't apply Act 172 but they apply Akta Wilayah Persekutuan which is Akta 267. Um, um, rancangan struktur negeri, semua ada. Ha, semua ada seluruh uh, state ada termasuk termasuk Putrajaya termasuk uh, Kuala Lumpur rancangan tempatan semua daerah seluruh Malaysia ada ya yeah? and rancangan kawasan khas is where a special area within a district um, for example in Penang um, they have rancangan struktur negeri Pulau Pinang and then they have rancangan tempatan Seberang Perai rancangan tempatan uh, Pulau Pinang but they also have rancangan kawasan khas for Bukit Bendera. 
for Georgetown, for specific area where they want to go in detail um, on certain perancangan. Eh? So these are some of the, uh, uh, these are the four layer of hierarchy uh, planning system in Malaysia. So this is um, at the national level though I mentioned just now Rancangan Fizikal Negara, those are the document that is listed in the Act. But at the national level, um, uh, Plan Malaysia Federal, uh, putting in these three main physical spatial document as Rancangan Pemajuan Nasional, they call it. Eh? Rancangan Fizikal Negara, Dasar Perbandaran Negara, dan juga Dasar Perbandaran Fizikal Desa Negara. There are these three um, document, national document that is actually being um, being promoted as Rancangan Pemajuan Nasional. Yeah? As you can read below there, Rancangan Fizikal Negara menetapkan rangka kerja perancangan pembangunan spasial yang diterjemahkan kepada strategi tindakan perancangan di peringkat negara, negeri dan tempatan. So basically when rancangan struktur negeri, rancangan tempatan daerah, they will also have to refer to rancangan fizikal negara. Everything has to be in line or align. Yeah? So if rancangan fizikal negara menetapkan um, uh, contohnya Kuala Lumpur sebagai um, uh, pusat pembangunan utama, um, the main conurbation, the main conurbation ada empat, eh? ada Kuantan, uh, uh, Klang Valley, Penang and Johor. So in rancangan struktur, they have to pick up that further and detail it out further. So that's how it is. Uh, dasar pembandaran negara um, sediakan untuk memastikan potensi pembangunan bandar-bandar dirancang sebaik mungkin so that uh, it won't provide, it won't create any competition between cities. Eh? So that everybody would have actually complement each other. So Kuantan do not compete with KL, KL don't compete with Penang, Penang don't compete with Johor. So this is important. Dasar Perbandaran Fizikal Desa Negara um, disediakan selaras dengan langkah pertama uh, berdasarkan pelan indikatif 9 Rancangan Fizikal Negara yang menyatakan keperluan terhadap sebuah dasar pembangunan desa negara. Because DPN looks at cities. Eh? So there is a need to look at outside the city's area. So dia main dasar bertujuan mewujudkan perancangan holistik bagi pembangunan desa dan melengkapkan dasar perbandaran negara yang disediakan. So okay, at this juncture, everybody are not confused yet. Yeah? Confused dah ke? Belum lagi ya? Eh? Okay. So, uh, National Physical Plan, I mentioned just now, there are already three National Physical Plan that has been produced. Yeah? So, basically, National Physical Plan selalunya every 10 years, um, we, we, we do it. So, why? Because um, perancangan are not stagnant. Eh? It is fluid. It has to respond to issues. It has to respond to the scenario of the the um, uh, governance and whatnot. So um, there's national physical physical plan um, uh, endorsed or gazetted at 2005, and then 2010 there's another national physical plan. We call it national physical plan kedua, and then 2015 there's uh, national physical plan ketiga, and currently it is being prepared. Um, another one, yeah. Um, so, Rancangan Fizikal Negara merupakan dokumen perancangan tertinggi. So, the highest level of uh, spatial document in Malaysia is actually um, National Physical Plan, which needs to be referred to and which needs to be aligned to um, um, down downwards to uh, state structure plan and uh, district um, apa tu district local plan. So, Majlis Perancangan Fizikal Negara. So, uh, when who actually monitors the National Physical Plan? This is Majlis Perancangan Fizikal Negara. Yeah? Majlis Perancangan Fizikal Negara is majlis tertinggi yang bertanggungjawab ke atas perancangan bandar dan desa di Senanjung Malaysia. Uh, diwujudkan untuk selaraskan, eh? selaraskan which is coordinate between the states um, um, so that all the dasar aktivitis berkaitan perancangan bandar memastikan penggunaan sumber dan pembangunan yang lebih seimbang dan mampan di peringkat negeri dan negara. So tak adalah um, we'll see every state would want an airport. 
every state would want um, you know um, uh, a port so uh, this would be coordinated at a higher level so um, this is very important to make sure that the resources uh, the, the the whole of peninsula resources are being looked at in totality so tugas-tugas uh, utama uh, uh, majlis perancangan strategik negara ni adalah ni ya uh, and it is also stated in act 172 so in act 172 also stated the whole of the function of um, uh, majlis perancangan fizikal negara and it is actually chaired by the prime minister and part of the members are all the chief ministers of states huh? and the secretariat is plan malaysia federal so um, rancangan fizikal negara ketiga um, there has one matlamat tiga teras which is the main tiga teras adalah pertumbuhan dinamik bandar dan dua bandar uh, teras kedua kemampanan spasial dan teras teras ketiga pembangunan community yang inklusif and um, it has a strategic direction 37 main strategy and 108 main actions. Um, so if you all have a look at this, it is very important to know that at the highest level, um, DASA or policies has been set for the whole country. This is a, a matlamat for the whole country. So meaning to say from Perlis until Johor, it cannot be contradict to this matlamat. Matlamat negara berdaya tahan dan berdaya huni. Yeah, so this is this is very important in order for the rest of the other um, uh, structure plan or local plan to be again set on their vision and mission. So plan pengurusan spatial negeri Selangor, wilayah persekutuan dan Putrajaya, they are also being set in terms of uh, rangka pengurusan spatial, sumber dan juga kawasan yang berisiko in terms of bencana semula semula jadi. So this is all being stated in there. Um, dasar perbandaran negara um, is look at also another dasar look at specific on the um, uh, cities uh, where the vision is to make sure that the bandar yang mampan untuk kesejahteraan rakyat. So they have different principles and uh, objectives, strategies and tindakan. Hmm. Um, so, if you can see up here, dasar perbandaran negara disediakan bagi memastikan potensi pembangunan bandar-bandar dirancang sebaik mungkin, eh, tak wujud persaingan. So, why I introduce all this? Because in order for you to start your master plan, you need to know whether your master plan that you are going to be developed within a certain area are in line with the rancangan fizikal negara or rancangan dasar perbandaran negara or even dasar physical data because even you even you think that master plan is at the city level or at um may not be in the city area you think that it won't be affected by the dasa up there at the national level you are um um we are wrong lah basically it already been stated and some main cities important cities are even been mentioned at the rancangan physical uh, negara contohnya all those cities that are border with uh, other countries ah huh? uh, pengkalan hulu perlis uh, uh, johor all that even though at the at the state level or city level it is mentioned at the rancangan physical negara so it has to make sure that we don't go uh, contradictory with our uh, main document this is physical data. Uh, data will look at all the dasar-dasar uh, di data. So this is rancangan struktur negeri. Um, rancangan struktur negeri is also um, um, listed or mentioned in the Act 172 under Section 7 until 11B. So it is a, a gazetted document. It is a document under the provision of Act of Parliament. Eh? So within the state this is example of the uh, rancangan struktur negeri or state structure plan there's Perak, there's Selangor here there's Pahang and there's also Kedah under under the um, the rancangan struktur negeri there are pernyataan bertulis yang merumuskan dasar dan cadangan am pihak berkuasa negeri ha? pihak berkuasa negeri berkenaan dengan pemajuan dan penggunaan tanah di dalam negeri so at this level there is also zoning already ya yeah? 
and um, there are also detail gambar raja and gambaran and whatever not lah. So tujuh fungsi utama for RSN is menterjemah dasar-dasar rancangan fizikal negara tadi. There's dasar, a big policy in um, national physical plan. In rancangan struktur negeri, at negeri level, they will actually translate those dasar. Yeah. Memenuhi keperluan statutory uh, di bawah Akta 172. That is why uh, rancangan struktur needs to be developed. Melengkapkan sistem uh, perancangan bandar dan desa uh, negara yang terdiri dari tiga peringkat iaitu rancangan fizikal negara, rancangan struktur negeri dan rancangan tempatan daerah. Dan membentangkan isu-isu perancangan peringkat uh, negeri. Yeah. And then membentuk matlamat dasar dan juga menyediakan rangka kerja, rancangan tempatan dan juga menyediakan asas bagi uh, menyelaraskan keputusan kerajaan dan swasta. Uh, menyediakan rangka kerja bagi rancangan tempatan ni, contohnya rancangan struktur negeri Selangor, katakanlah. Eh. And di negeri Selangor ada 12 daerah. So di sini dia akan menyelaraskan ke setiap daerah perlu mengadakan rancangan tempatan sendiri dan dia telah me menggariskan apakah dia fokus-fokus uh, setiap daerah di peringkat negeri. So peringkat daerah will be filled out further. So these are actually process. If you look at the process, the one thing that I want to highlight is that the process of publicity. Eh? Publicity dan penyertaan awam dan laporan tinjauan. Publicity here and here is actually part of the process to make sure that planning documents are engaged with the community. This is where the community are being informed of the, the, the perancangan, of the planning of an area. So this is where um, the community will be able to, they call it object, huh? object or put in their um, disagreement or idea or, or pandangan. Yeah? So at the process of rancangan struktur, rancangan tempatan daerah and rancangan kawasan khas, this process are being put in uh, so that the, the public will be able to actually be engaged, be uh, make known of all the perancangan. So this is, um, now we go to rancangan tempatan which is called rancangan uh, uh, district local plan um, where this example are being put here as Kuala Lumpur um, and this is actually Subang Jaya and also Shah Alam. Um, so this is also under a provision of law and the main function of it is actually kenapasi keutamaan um, sorry, translate dasar dan cadangan umum yang terkandung di dalam rancangan struktur. So you can see just now the flow eh, from rancangan fizikal negara to rancangan uh, uh, struktur negeri and then in rancangan struktur negeri, it translated all the dasar from rancangan fizikal negara. At rancangan tempatan daerah, it will translate all the dasar and cadangan dalam rancangan struktur negeri tadi in rancangan tempatan. And uh, menyediakan garis panduan for uh, pihak berkuasa tempatan, agensi kerajaan dan swasta untuk pembangunan kawasan. And also it will um, outline the garis panduan, kawalan pembangunan, memudahkan proses-proses pelaksanaan. So meaning to say this is where the zoning, the detail zoning comes in, the uh, use class order comes in, this is where it is. And then mengenal pasti keutamaan kawasan tindakan. Meaning to say under the lo uh, district local plan, it will identify what are the area, where are the area that requires to develop further the special area plan or rancangan kawasan khas. So uh, that's where the flow of the document is important. Yeah? Uh, rancangan kawasan khas, um, example, uh, this is PJ, uh, rancangan kawasan khas section 13, rancangan kawasan khas kuasa damansara, rancangan kawasan khas Melaka World Solar Valley and rancangan kawasan khas pusat pentadbiran Kuala Nerus. This rancangan kawasan khas can only be developed or being put forward if that if it's mentioned in rancangan struktur eh, in rancangan tempatan daerah tadi ya yeah? if it's not uh, then it has to be uh, um, mentioned lah basically ya yeah? so all those three documents just now that i uh, mentioned uh, rancangan uh, struktur negeri tempatan daerah and also kawasan khas 
those are three documents under the provision of law it calls as rancangan pemajuan so under bahagian 3 akta uh, 17 uh, 172 uh, um, just now i show you the parts huh? under bahagian 3 it is called development plans atau rancangan pemajuan these three document yeah so it is important uh, for everyone here to know that in order for you uh, why you need to know this because they are the, the act of parliament so you cannot do things that are contradictory to the doc, this document so um, and the process, if you can see here, process penyediaan rancangan tempatan daerah and process penyediaan rancangan kawasan khas are the same. And in all three processes of this document, engagement to the public is still there under the publicity awal and also under the publicity the law also that it needs to go through the publicity so that to allow community public to object or give their opinion on the development. So it is very clear um, uh, seen that um, this process are quite transparent, lah, quite transparent to the public. If the public say that they do not know, it's just a matter of ignorance. I can just say that because, um, you know, when the publicity are being shown, it is actually being informed through newspaper. It has to go through newspaper or they will display at few um, important um, uh, areas where public are around. Normally, they got shopping center, they got all those uh, PBT's officers and also in the newspaper. Yeah. Um, okay. Aplikasi rancangan pemajuan ke dalam master plan. Um, rancangan pemajuan which I mentioned just now are actually this one here. Rancangan struktur negeri Tengganu and draft rancangan tempatan daerah uh, Kemaman. Yeah. So uh, basically when we wanted to do any development, this is I'm putting an example that we are doing a, a master plan for Rantau Petronas in Kerti, eh? Kerti Terengganu. So, the objective is membangunkan uh, semula uh, Rantau Petronas menjadi sebuah komuniti pintar dan mampan. So, that would be the vision, eh? uh, the vision of the area. So, in order for me to develop or translate those vision into master plan, um, or creating a smart sustainable community in Rantau Petronas. I need to know what are the existing documents in place um, that has been produced by the government. Yeah. So um, there is um, uh, community pinta and, com and sustainable. So smart and sustainable. How do I how do I refer? What document do I refer to? So these are some of the documents that um, that we need to refer to. I did not touch on the international document just now, but as you all know, um, now uh, these are the two main international documents that we have to refer to. The SDGs, which is, has 17 SDGs. If you, if you look at all those 17, and I hope by now all of you would know that there are Sustainable Development Goals report. Huh? Uh, that is actually produced by the United uh, UNDP um, and New Urban Agenda, also under the um, uh, UNDP, eh? UN Habitat. So, in before we even go to the national level, we also refer to the SDG, looking at Rantau Petronas, 400 acres being in Kerti. Um, what are the documents that I need to look at first? Rancangan Struktur Negeri Terengganu. So, Terengganu structure plan, I have to refer to. And then what are the other gazetted documents that I have to refer to? Just now I mentioned to you, the Rancangan Pemajuan are the Rancangan Tempatan Daerah. So, Kertih falls under the District of Kemaman. So, I have to go to the, uh, this Rancangan Tempatan Daerah Kemaman, which is available on our website and refer to especially the zoning, the DASA, the policy, you know, making sure that when I wanted to develop this 400 acre, it is in line with uh, the DASA and policy and zoning. 
that's the most important thing yeah and the intensity all are mentioned in the in the uh, rancangan tempatan daerah but what else do i need to refer to so um uh, at the national level i will refer to this regional master plan just now i was mentioning um rancangan uh, wilayah kan okay? rancangan wilayah which is there's Iskandar wilayah there's eastern corridor there's northern uh, uh, corridor um, uh, uh, apa tu so for the case of Kerteh I need to refer to ECER development report so I'm referring to that and I have to refer to dasar perbandaran negara to see whether the um, I am in line with the dasar that being put in and I have to also refer to rancangan fizikal negara whether there's any specific thing that has been mentioned on Kerteh within the RFN just in case and um, since um, um, the client wanted to make sure that the the 400 acre is in line with um, sustainability so i choose i choose to refer to low carbon city framework you know uh, low carbon city framework is one of the tools that uh, um, uh, and one one of the framework that has been produced and um, uh, gazetted or not gazetted is produced under the the national level which is under kementerian used to be called keta kementerian teknologi hijau dan air if i'm not mistaken um and now and then later it goes to mestec and now it's changed to kasa so those are the government document and i also refer to smart city framework because my clients say they want community yang pintar. So I need to refer to the smart city framework and not to forget I also need to refer to rancangan Malaysia ke-11. Those are the uh, uh, the document um, that also important that I need to refer to. Um, in this case, um, our team, the consultant team also would like to refer to Green Building Index Township because we do not just want to refer to one sustainability framework we want to refer to two sustainability yeah. framework so in this uh, project we actually merge um, the uh, lccf and also the gbi township you know the first time ever in malaysia that we actually combine that so these are among of the um, document that I, I actually, we actually refer to. This is actually one of my projects under my company. Um, um, I, I actually introduced that first, eh? so because I jump a bit just now. So pihak yang terlibat dalam proses penyediaan rancangan permajuan tadi, yeah. why we need to refer to all those documents uh, when we do master plan? Because um, during the preparation of rancangan pemajuan, which is the preparation of structure plan, local plan, and special area plan, um, different stakeholders has already been engaged. Yeah, um, the state government, the federal government, um, the um, local authorities, the community, NGOs, um, <clears throat> professional bodies, and agency technicals. Are all have already been engaged, being informed, being deliberated during the develop, development of structure plan, local plan, and also special area plan. So when we wanted to do the master plan, actually at that level, we do not have to engage anymore if we have already in line with the zoning, you know the activities that we uh, has men that has been mentioned in the um, uh, in the local plan or uh, special area plan because because the public public has made known the stakeholders have already been made known so we are not going against um, uh, whatever the government document so that is why it's very important for you to refer to those documents when you wanted to do master plan yeah. So, um, community involvement, uh, that's why I mentioned just now, community involvement dalam proses penyediaan rancangan pemajuan is also being stated wajib, compulsory under the provision of law. Uh, peranan awam penting, why? It's very important secara langsung um, supaya what? Uh, sebagai penduduk, uh, pihak awam berperanan penting dan semua peringkat 
untuk dia tahu dari masa ke semasa atau selepas keperluan maklum balas responsif perancangan yang lebih berkesan because sometimes they would want to you know to comment or to make sure that certain activities are not uh, being developed within the area and what not. Eh? Okay. Mm. Um, and next is, uh, uh, these are some of the publicity lah and the forms. And, and um, this is actually the OSC 3.0 plus. I don't think I would want to go through there. And this is actually the the main framework that um, we actually develop for Rantau Petronas. Yeah? So the vision of the area is um, creating smart sustainable community in Rantau Petronas. And the holistic approach in uh, achieving the vision is delivering economic growth, sustaining the environment and enhancing community living. This is the three P's that I mentioned just now, the people, planet and profit. Yeah? This is the, the, the three P's. And why we want to uh, achieve, why we want to achieve this holistic approach is because we wanted to reduce the CO2 emission, 66% um, of CO2 equivalent by 2040. This is the aspiration of the client in order to be in line with the national aspiration, which is what? Do you know what's the national aspiration? To reduce 45% intensity CO2 equivalent um, by 2035. So, uh, in a way, uh, Rantau Petronas or Kerte would like to be in line with the government aspiration. So, and at the same time, to achieve uh, microclimate thermal comfort while reducing further four degrees Celsius. And the big idea for this development is flagship township, livable community, community living, legacy creation, and making it as a catalyst. Um, flagship township is because this is first ever that um, Rantau Petronas has mixed, has combined two national, uh, two document, two tools in Malaysia, which is the GBI Township and also LCCF. Um, so it would be the benchmark uh, for the nation in terms of sustainability. Um, livable neighborhood and community living, we are creating all those um, uh, low carbon uh, planning principles so that it will give a bit more um, um, uh, livable to the neighborhood. Legacy creation is when um, it's Petronas who are actually being there for so long. They wanted to also um, put their legacy within the whole development. And uh, the catalyst, uh, to become the catalyst for the whole of corridor in eastern region, um, hoping that by developing uh, the 400 acres, it will also become a catalyst for the whole corridor of the area. And uh, in achieving those big ideas, uh, the mission is to, to apply low carbon city planning by applying green environment, green mobility, green infrastructure, and also green building. So the below part, the reference document, we are referring to the low carbon city framework and assessment system where we look at the urban environment, urban transportation, urban infrastructure and also the building and also the GBI township elements and coupled with the SMART initiative referring to the uh, Malaysian Smart City Framework um, 2019. Yeah? So, um, there's a question here saying that is there any part of the policy that you think architects have not fully explored yet? Architects have not fully explored yet. Um, not sure. <laughs> um, well, well, um, uh, before this, what we have actually um, uh, look at is sustainability uh, um, issues. Huh? Um, architects normally look at buildings. Um, 
uh, green buildings and whatnot. Well, it is also important to look at whether the green buildings are situated at a sustainable, sustainable area. Meaning to say, um, you can't just build any building anywhere. Um, if you build a green building in a non-sustainable area, will it be sustainable? Because sustainable is being seen not just at the building, but at a bigger context. If you are putting a building in an area where there is no um, um, uh, access road or there is no um, public facilities, there is no uh, proper utilities provision, uh, it is with the, if it's a platinum building also, it will not be sustainable in a bigger context. So it is important to also look at um, in order to make sure that the build, though the building are rated highest level of um, rate in terms of a green building, but it is not in a fully sense of um, sustainable in a bigger context, um, that it is not sustainable in a true sense. So sustainability not just within a building it has to be looked at in totality in a bigger area that is why we look at at the urban environment urban infrastructure not just infrastructure within a plot of land but infrastructure within a bigger context um, um, uh, urban transportation and also building we, we do not miss out the building portion but the building to be seen in a context i think other than that policy um as long as uh when you wanted you know to develop a certain building whether residential or commercial you have to refer to a policy or structure plan local plan special area plan that already being developed within those particular area that you want to develop All right, thank you very much for answering the questions and thank you very much for the wonderful session. So before we any any last word that you hope to change about the policy or what is your opinion? Um, um, no, I, I hope that everybody, um, um, everybody, all professions, um, when, when you have graduated, where you wanted to go into the industry, it, when you wanted to develop something, um, you have to know that there are policies, documents that already existed in Malaysia. There's one last question that mentioned there. Uh, uh, I think it's unwise to build too near to the sea without considering the inevitable rise of the sea level due to climate change. Again, I would like to bring back just now, um, whatever the built up area or the, um, the consideration whether those areas are able to be built uh, uh, as a as a community or not, the Kerti area, the Kerti master plan that I showed just now is an existing area. Um, it's not a it's not a green field. Huh? It's a is a uh, infill development. Uh, meaning to say, uh, those are actually existing development where some of the plots of lands are vacant, but some are need to be redeveloped. So um, um, when when we actually propose that local plan, structure plan has already identified those areas as buildable area. And local plan, structure plan has already looked at in terms of whether the sea, sea level going to rise at a certain level, um, whether it's going to impact into those particular area. So when that is very important, to refer back to the structure plan or local plan because those level of document has actually go in detail in terms of the research whether those particular area are actually would be able to be built or not you know so as the um um, um in a way um if later if the uh, owner of the land wanted to do additional research yeah, uh, just to be sure that you know um, they have considered in case that um, uh, those uh, um, uh, what the other climate 
change um, um, issue will impact into the development, they can. But uh, the general, um, first general um, rules and regulation and also uh, uh, issues has been looked at, at the level of structure plan and local plan and even special area plan. So, um, and there's also a study, um, uh, zone persisiran pantai, eh? zone persisiran pantai under JPS, there's also study being carried out within all the zone persisiran pantai within Malaysia. So if it's uh, found out in that document that those areas need to be vacant out because of the sea level rise later, it will be coordinated through structure plan and local plan because those are the gazetted documents. The other documents are not gazetted documents. So um, it will be alerted there. Yeah? Okay. Uh, another last question for me. Uh, what, what do you hope the next generation will take notes about um, by our young generation? Um, I, I do hope that um, when um, in the future, that when we do development, we would actually incorporate not just one angle of um, a development. We should look at in many other aspects, um, aspect of uh, community, environment, and also people, which this is very important. And in doing so, um, like myself, though I do planning, there are certain aspects of engineering that I wouldn't know, which I would need to understand um, further. Same like engineer, you know, when they do something, they are being already being looked look at as their norm, what, what they have normally think of a development can or cannot do. So normally for them to change to a different uh, focus is, will take them some time. I give you an example of a transport engineer when they are actually a TOD development yeah TOD development we said that those area supposedly an area where you wanted to limit cars coming into the area right so eventually when you do TOD you would reduce the car parking because you wanted to limit people to bring car so limit the car parking because they're already public transportation um, then when they do development, when the engineer, uh, the, the traffic engineer calculate the TIA, traffic impact assessment, they would still require to make big roads, make highways and make flyovers. And I said, why? Because there are not many more cars coming in because we have limited the, the car parks and whatever not. But they were saying, oh, I'm calculating the traffic not based on that, but I'm calculating the traffic based on the um, plot ratio, GFA and whatnot. So, of course, the GFA is begin going to grow because of the car parks has reduced. So, that's why it's more uh, improvement to the roads are required. When the roads are become bigger, there's more cars coming in. <laughs> so, I don't know. So... Sometimes, um, you know, those are the, um, the ideas that are not in line from one profession to another, which need to be discussed. Um, so, uh, there's another topic that I'm going to talk under UEM, under the IEM, uh, Institute Engineer Malaysia, uh, the end of the month, um, talking about TOD. So, those are the things where, plan, what planners think, and how engineer can actually you know work together and and in line some of their thoughts so that everything are in line and it's become sustainable so same like architects and planners and engineers and landscape architects and um, you know social planners and whatnot so everybody has to work together to make sure that um, the resources are being utilized at the optimized level um, and we are not doing things uh, out of tangent. Eh? And the most important thing is that for, for um, architects to work within the structure of the government policies, you know, so that when you do one thing, you have to make sure that you refer to the, to the policies, acts and, and the regulation and the um, requirement that has been set um, under the provision of law of the country. Okay, interesting, interesting idea. Yes, 
I, I totally agree with you. So I think there are no more questions from the from the audience. Any more questions? Final call. Okay. Okay, I think our session is until here. So thank you very much. I thank think. you. And thank you thank all you. the audience. Yeah. And please support, please continue to support NASA for the following event. Inshallah. Um, and, and please, if there's any other question, uh, you can, anyone can contact me through um, Urban Scale um, Studio or even Malaysia Institute of Planners. Yeah. Or, or they are interested to join in your team for the better planning. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Thank okay, you, everyone. Thank you Have a nice day. Have a nice weekend. Have a nice day.